What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Titans with the Sick Podcast. Got a lot of great news to cover, some surprising. Uh, of course, the Tannehill saga continues. Uh, we're going to cover all things Titans as always. Let's get right into it. Sammy, start me up. Turn up your volume. Your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Ladies and gentlemen, 94 yards. Touchdown, Titans. He is the baddest man in the NFL. And he just took her to the house. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick! It's going to be sick. What's up, folks? Welcome back. Back as always. Uh, Mr. Lombard is out and about uh, on the prowl tonight, so he's taking the night off. Hopefully he's going to win some money. He's in New Jersey's version of Sin City. Uh, We wish him the best of luck, but me and Jared are here to break it down. Jared, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good, man. Definitely be great to be back again this week. And uh, I'm not the host this week. I'm handing the reins back over to you, oh. so it was good. But uh, me and Ben, we held it down pretty well Listen, last we week. We held it down. Period. I was I was very impressed. Your opening was on point. Uh, everything was just excellent. Actually, it made me fear a little bit. I'm a little worried now that uh, my my spot might be uh, up for grabs. No, but. no fear. We're all through all three together. <laughs> no, I know that. Uh, but listen, a lot of good stuff to cover today. Some really surprising news off the bat. I'll just jump right into it. I saw uh, an article, or I wouldn't even call it an article. It was just a graphic by CBS Sports who has a reputation of just throwing out some outlandish things that I guess to just get some clicks, but. There was a young gentleman, uh, I believe his name is Cody Benjamin, might be might be right. I checked him out. I have like double the followers of him, so I don't know if that brings any less credibility to him or not. But irregardless, he had brought up the topic of Daniel Jones and potential landing spots for him. Now, to me, I thought it was almost a foregone conclusion that at least, you know, forgetting them what the money was going to be, there was no way this guy was not going to be the Giants quarterback next year. I mean, talk about. Uh, the surprise of the century where the New York Giants make the playoffs and winning a game on the road. So I thought there was literally zero chance he would ever consider going anywhere else. And the, there was no chance the Giants would let him go anywhere else. But apparently there's some uh, issues with the money. He wants somewhere close to $45 million. I think they're somewhere around the 30-ish threshold. And now there's some talks from his agent like, you know, listen, shit, I got off the pot. And this kid brings up four or five teams and the Titans are one of them. Obviously, I didn't think much of it, but let's just say, let's play devil's advocate that there's an opportunity to bring Daniel Jones into Nashville. Um, Would you entertain that? Would it make you irate? Would you be glad? What would you think about that, Jared? Listen, we need so much more than Daniel Jones. And for him to want $45 million, as I've seen that graphic up there too, ain't happening. We're paying Ryan Ryan Tannehill $36 million, and we're trying to get away from his contract. Makes no sense of bringing a guy like that. Um, To me... It's, it's retarded. I did see something else. I mean, that's all clickbait, like you said, the the, the CBS shit. You know, put yeah. us at the, at the bottom of the list, get Titans Twitter going. But uh, to me, I saw something, too. We're going to go uh, bring up quarterback play. I seen a um, – I think it was the 33 spot. You, you follow them on Twitter? Um, you you seen of them 33-something? I forgot what it was. It sounds familiar. They come. They came up with a mock draft, and I know it's mock draft season. And um, I saw one of probably the best mock drafts we've had with them uh, today. They had us moving up to six to get C.J. Stroud. Now, that's entertaining if you want to go entertainment. From from 11 to six to get C.J. Stroud, you know, to, to not have, a, you know, our our uh, division rivals to get a quarterback like that, I would entertain that. But the Daniel Jones thing, you're going to have it. Yeah, listen, stranger things have happened, right? I mean, I think you'd ask most draft aficionados and, and guys at ESPN, I think they'd say very unlikely C.J. Stroud makes it to pick number six. Uh, but some of these other guys are just starting to raise some eyebrows. The, the kid from Florida, yeah. Well, I mean, um, who knows? I mean, there, there, there have been sh- much stranger things to have happened. Um, you know, there, a lot of people didn't think Malik Willis was going to drop as far as he did. Not to bring up ancient history, as some might call, it, but uh, you know, nothing's off the table when it comes to the draft. So uh, that's what makes it so exciting because it's a reality show that you know. It, it, it really is. Success. It's the best reality show on earth, and I'll watch that over anything that Netflix has to offer. Uh, so we'll see how things play out. Um, just to shake it up a little bit and, and throw something out there that might 
stir the pot just a bit. Uh, I'd still take Daniel Jones over Ryan Tannehill. Oh my That's God, just my opinion. Million. I mean, I mean, I, yeah, no, 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 he no, had no. a great year. You're talking about money aside? Yeah, money aside. Absolutely okay. money aside. And I the only see. reason being is because of he is a much better runner. And I'm sorry, everyone wants to think that Tannehill is still Tannehill wheels. He's just not. He's just not. Even before he got hurt, he was not as, as elusive as he used to be. Uh, and, you know, Daniel Jones is a fucking running back. I don't care what anybody says. He's a running back who can throw like a quarterback. But the guy's built like a brick shit house. He's almost a Josh Allen clone. Um, and, I, I mean, you know, money aside, obviously it's not going to happen. This is just sake of discussion. You know, things to get us through the offseason. Uh, but after what I witnessed this past season uh, and now, you know, progressing and, he, and he's starting to progress, he's getting better and better. Um, it, I, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pissed off, you know, if that's, if that's the route we're looking to take as a short-term investment, I don't know about a long-term deal. I don't think he's expecting a long, long, long-term deal, maybe like three, four years. I don't know what, it, what, what his camp's looking for, but just for sake of discussion, I, I'd still take him, honestly. Well, well, it's February, it's February 20th and it's probably around, you know, 815. You can mark this down that me and you have agreed on something with a quarterback for this team. And my giant friends are probably going to bust my balls that I'm going to agree with you with that, saying I'll take Daniel Jones over Ryan Tannehill. Listen, the proof's in the pudding. Okay, oh, absolutely. He had a great Ryan, year. Ryan yeah. Tannehill has never been the focal point of a playoff win. No. In no universe do the Giants beat Minnesota without Daniel Jones' performance with his arm and even more importantly with his legs. Yeah, I didn't nice. agree with the play style they decided to put him in, but they did whatever was necessary to win. And, you know, I could go over his stats right now. They were pretty freaking good. And he was, it, you know, it wasn't Saquon that Saquon had hardly any fucking carries that game. Uh, so just for that sheer sake alone, I mean, he's a tough MFer. Um, I had the honor of, you know, taking a picture with him, which was really cool. Uh, out what was, in, that, uh, was that in Hoboken? That was in, that was uh, actually in uh, Manasquan. That was down the shore. That was at, uh, I forget the name of the bar. Dude is every bit of six five, whatever he is. Um, and I I was the only person in the whole joint that knew who it was, and I I could not believe it. I mean, we're in the heart of giant country, um, and nobody knew, nobody recognized. And I, I went up to him like, listen, I got a bunch of giant friends. Somehow nobody else recognized you. Do you mind if we take a picture? And at first he said no, and then I was a little more annoying. I was half in the bag. Eventually he was like, all right, real quick, and then. People around me saw the flash go off, and I was. And at that point, I was like, "Fuck!" Yeah. And nobody, just still nobody. He had a Brooklyn Nets hat on, which I loved. Uh, that was really fun. But anyway, uh, we actually have a guest that just got back to me. I was a little worried whether he was going to make it or not, but he's actually going to make it on. Well, we'll bring him in immediately as soon as he's ready to go. Sweet. Uh, absolutely, very good friend of mine in the in the Nashville media space. Um, so we'll get his opinion on it. New York native, so we'll also get his uh, opinion on the on the clickbait that was rolling around with Daniel Jones. Um, but yeah, so moving forward, that we'll let our guest touch on that a little bit more um, when he when he gets in. Uh, but real quick before he arrives, uh, another topic of discussion that we'll touch on with our guests as well is uh, Derrick Henry. There's been some circulating rumors about a possible. Uh, extension for him in order to free up some money. Uh, it, there's a million different opinions on what his role should be moving forward, whether he should have a role, whether we should try to get something for him. Um, I think it's kind of cut and dry personally. I don't think he's making enough money to remove him from the offense when he's definitely still a focal point, as you saw last year. But um, actually, you know what? John, our guest is ready to roll. So we'll, we'll save all this for for him so let's bring him in very very dear friend of mine uh mr john burton hey, uh, how you doing morning. tonight john what's going on guys sorry for logging in a little late uh yeah. it's, been a, it's been a manic monday but uh it's great to talk to you guys no don't worry Thank about it on. i mean yeah i you've been so generous you and greg have been so generous with me on on the phones and i don't think i've waited five seconds to ever talk to either of you you guys have always thrown me right on i can't appreciate it enough uh john burton sports anchor new channel five you can also find him 
uh, National Sports Radio, WNSR with Greg Burton on weekdays. Um, really, thanks so much for joining us. We've had so many great guests, and it's an honor for me to finally return the favor and have you on my show because you always uh, have me on yours all the time. So, uh, well, I can't it's great to be on with you, Sal. And like I always tell you on my show uh, in Nashville, the radio show, you know, when you call, you're not a you're not a caller. You're a guest. You know, I love your passion for Titans football. And, uh, you know, it comes through and you're a great follow on Twitter. And the one thing I've always said to my listeners on our show is the fact that at the end of the, no matter what, you always have the Titans fans back like you. You will fight the good fight for the Tennessee Titans from up there in New Jersey. And I respect that a great deal. So it's great to be on with both of you guys. That means a lot to me, John. So I'll jump right into our first topic of discussion. Uh, ironically, th this ties right into your personal your personal team. If you guys didn't know, uh, Mr. Burton is a New York native. He is a tri-state brethren, uh, if you will. Um, there has been some topic of discussion that uh, Mr. Daniel Jones might not be too happy with the um, – the offer that the New York football giants have given him for uh, his future payroll. And there was a gentleman um, on a CBS um, employee as well that uh, mentioned possible landing spot for Daniel Jones being the Titans. I don't know what, what university pulled that out of, <laughs> yeah. but regardless of any of that, what's your thoughts on the whole situation with um, uh, Mr. Jones and, and where do you see all this ending? Well, a little surprising to hear that, you know, Daniel Jones is a, reportedly coming out with these contract demands. I mean, look, I'm a Giants fan, die hard. I want I want Daniel Jones to stay in New York. I want him to be a Giant. But if he's if he's asking for $45 million a year, that can't happen. You know, the Giants are a rebuilding team. Yeah, they had a great season last year. They won nine games, got to the playoffs, won a playoff game, and Daniel Jones played very well in. But Joe Shane, the, the still new general manager, He's got to be smart with the cap money that they have and to keep rebuilding this team. They need a lot of – they need weapons on offense. They need wide receivers. Um, you know, obviously they need linebackers on defense. They need some help in the secondary. And so if you're in a situation where you're going to put all your free cap money into two players, let's say, Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, that's not going to bode well for the Giants uh, down the road. So my hope is they can get something worked out. Hopefully that these reports aren't necessarily true. I'm hoping that the Giants and Daniel Jones can come to some kind of a Ryan Tannehill type, you know, contract. And, you know, they're able to keep Saquon Barkley. But, you know, as a fan, I guess I have to face the reality, the, the, the real uh, possibility that one or maybe both those guys may not be Giants next year. And then what do you do after that? As far as him coming to the Titans, that would be interesting, would it not? I don't know what Rand Carthon, the new general manager down here in Nashville, would be willing to pay him. Um, you know, what do you do with Ryan Tannehill? Do you cut him after June 1st? Maybe. So that's what makes the offseason both exciting and nerve-wracking if you're a fan like we are because we want our teams to do the, everything in, in, in their power to do every, you know, the best that they can to help us get to the next level. And if it means saying goodbye to guys we really like, that's the tough part of it. So I hope and pray that the Giants and Daniel Jones – I've done a 180 on Daniel Jones, okay? This time last year I was like, this guy is not part of our future. You know, he he can go somewhere else. But he flipped me this year. He played well. He cut down on the turnovers. He didn't throw for a lot of yards or a lot of touchdowns. But, you know, he proved to me that he can win games. And he, and he you know, went into Minnesota and say what you want about the Vikings. That was, what, a 12-win football team, whatever they were. And he went on the road and won a very important game. And so I'm hoping they can keep this momentum going. But uh, it was interesting hearing that news that supposedly pro football talk had saying that, you know, Jones wants $45 million a year. I'm not paying him $45 million a year. I like him. I like him a lot, but I don't like him that much. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the problem going on, with, you know, in the, around the NFL now. Uh, you see the the teams that are really good with you know it's the Dolphins it's the Eagles it's the the Bengals you know it's it's Herbert and the Chargers all those quarterbacks are on rookie deals still so they're mm -hmm. trying to build around the quarterback right once you once you have to pay that you know forty five to fifty million dollars I mean the only one in the league right now is uh, Mahomes when his hair is on fire so I mean mm -hmm. he could throw to anybody he could be good so moving forward all these teams I mean it's very scary you know what's going to happen around this league you know especially with the Titans now with Ryan Tannehill. You know, what I would love to see them do, like I was talking to Sal before you jumped on, I'd like to yep. see them move up in the draft and get C.J. Stroud. I saw a mock draft today where they uh, traded with Detroit for six and C.J. Stroud magically fell. 
you know, in a, in a mock in a mock draft. I mean, that would be perfect for us, you know, in our situation because we could free up that money for the quarterback and we can go elsewhere and help the line and help, you know, uh, inside linebackers where we're going to need help and wide right. receivers, obviously. But here's – well, a couple things on that, right? Um, C.J. Stroud played very well in the college football playoffs, should have beat Georgia. He played great. But, you know, Justin Fields aside, I've been watching ball a long time. I'm an old man, guys. I've been watching ball for over 40 years. Name me the last great or even good quarterback to come out of Ohio State. I'll wait for your answer there. Yeah. Um, it's a while. And yeah, and I mean, on paper, it seems like a, like a like a decent uh, a decent way to go. But you know, C.J. Stroud, it's he's got some skills. You know, he's got a lot more mobility than I thought he did. But the thing about it is, if you make this move and you say, "All right, we're going with a rookie quarterback," you are one hundred percent committing to a rebuild. Now, you know, you guys are fans. I'm just a guy that covers the team down here, and, and I take a professional interest in what they do. How is that going to play with the fans, number one? And number two, is your head coach, Mike Vrabel, going to be okay with that? I mean, yeah, you got job security. You just signed a new deal. But Vrabel doesn't strike me as a guy like, okay, I'm willing to go, you know, 6-11 and 11 this year and not make the playoffs, and then, you know, let's, let's build down the line. That's the only thing, because if you do make that move, and say, we're moving on from Tannehill, we're going to move up, we're going to draft a rookie quarterback. Maybe you could sign a veteran to start while the rookie gets ready, but uh, you're basically telling your fans, hey, we are committed to a rebuild. And maybe that's not such a bad thing when you look at where the Titans are. And, you know, I look at I look at our other pro team down here, guys, the Nashville Predators. They've been fooling themselves for a couple of years. They need, they need to do a rebuild. They're not going to make the playoffs this year. And they got a lot of high-priced guys on this hockey team. And they're going nowhere. They're seven points out of the last playoff spot. They lost a, a kick in the groin game yesterday. So as long as you're honest with your fans and say, listen, we're going to fight our, 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 our fannies off. We're going to try to win. We're going to try to make the playoffs. But we're going younger. So I don't know. I mean, you guys are the fans. You tell me. Would you be okay with that if, they, if Rand Carthon and Mike Vrabel and Amy Adams Strunk came out and said, you know, folks, we're 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 hitting the reset button. You know, we're going to get you that Super Bowl, but it's not going to be for a while. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, John, I I absolutely would. And I'm going to tell you okay. why, and I think it's pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. um, there, you know, I I've given Ryan Tannehill a lot of a lot of grief over the over the over his time here, but I've also yeah. given him a ton of praise. <laughs> and and nobody knows better than you. You know, it might have been a little bit of a seesaw up and down, but mm -hmm. I think there's been plenty more time that he's been with this team that I've been on his side than not on his side. Yep. You've been very fair. You've been yeah, I've been fair. fair. Yeah. And and it really, this this four game slid he had before he got hurt really put the nail in the coffin for me. Um, mm -hmm. He doesn't have it. You know, you can be a good passer of the football. You can be a good game manager. You got to have it in order to win the game when everything's on the line. Yep. And uh, you can argue that Daniel Jones has had more success in the playoffs and has had more of an impact on a winning playoff game than Ryan Tannehill has ever had. And he's got about seven more years in the league. Um, yeah. So, you know, if the the big names like the Lamars, like the Aaron Rodgers, if those guys aren't in reality obtainable, um, then I'm absolutely all for repo because the sooner you start it, yep, the sooner you can get to where you want to be. And, and think um, about this, Sal, and think about yeah. this. I mean, you got that new stadium supposedly coming in what, 26? Absolutely. Yep. You want to be you want to have the rebuild over and done with, ready to rock and roll yep. by the time that new stadium opens. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, don't, don't want to go to this. People don't want to go to this beautiful new palace in downtown Nashville to watch a you know a, a six and eleven football team. Yeah. I mean, I don't see it as a full rebuild because, like I said, with those names before, with Tua and, and Burrow and Herbert and and, and um, Hertz, all, all those guys are on their rookie deals, and they're still just surrounding their quarterback with talent. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if you, I mean, I understand the Ohio State quarterback, but you could say the same thing about, uh, you know, well, I can't, you can't even say it about Alabama no more because you got Tua and you got Hurts and, and all these other right. guys coming out. But, um, I, I'm, I'm for it. I, I, any one of these quarterbacks now, I was, I was the biggest Ryan Tannehill supporter. So I can tell you, me and him butt heads every single <laughs> podcast about it. Um, yeah. I'm kind of over the fact of paying the quarterback 30 to $40 million because we need so much with right. this team. 
You know, and you can't be invested into that. I understand it's a huge position, but I'm for that rookie deal quarterback. And, you know, not I, like I said, I wouldn't say it's a rebuild. A retool would mm-hmm. be a better word for this team to get over the hump and, and to even win the division next year. Yeah, so, that we're still competitive. We're still competitive. Oh, all that's Remember, on the table. Listen, we, we yeah. have a great defense still, too. I was just going to say, you got a you got a really solid defense. You'll get Harold Landry back. Um, you know, get those guys healthy in the secondary. We'll see what they do at inside linebacker. I don't know if you know if if uh, David Long Jr. and Zach Cunningham will be back. Uh, I, I would imagine one or both those guys might be gone. But you know, if you if you fill in there at that inside linebacker position. Your defense and plus, you know, your running game with Derrick Henry. I mean, you can win games. You could pro- you can maybe win your division, and get to the playoffs. The problem is, and you guys know this, sooner or later, you gotta you're gonna run into Burrow, you're gonna run into Mahomes, you're gonna run into Josh That's Allen. Absolutely. And if you don't have the guy that can go step for step with one of those guys, you'll have a nice season, but you won't probably get to your ultimate goal. Yeah, so that brings me to my question. Like, obviously, it's a little redundant, but you know, John, let's say you're Rand Carthon. I mean, mm-hmm. your professional opinion. Um, what avenue would you travel uh, in 2023? Obviously, the, the ultimate goal is to eventually find your long-term uh, answer at quarterback. But, you know, if you were in his position, what do you think the best chance of success would be in 2023 if you did not want to just completely flip the script and start from scratch? If it's me, guys, I'm going to probably run it back at least one more year with Tannehill, and I'll try to mm-hmm. restructure his deal, make it more cap-friendly, um, try to bolster that offensive line, You know, we mentioned how good the defense should be again next year. So that will help. Um, And I would try to find a quarterback maybe in, you know, the middle round, somebody that I can maybe develop. Uh, Unfortunately, Malik Willis, I don't think is going to be the answer. That's the route I would go. Because like you said, with health and a little bit of luck, you could still win the the AFC South next year. Your only real threat is going to be Jacksonville, right? Indy's got a new coach, you know, I don't really anticipate them being a a threat. Houston's got a long way to go. Happy for D'Amico Ryan's getting his opportunity to be the coach there. And, you know, we'll see what he does. But, you know, it's basically a two-horse race, in my opinion, as we sit here right now in the AFC South. So, you know, I would try to run it back with Tannehill. And we know what his limitations are. We know he's probably only going to get us so far. But if you want to stay competitive, that's the route I would go. But that's that's a tough – that's a tough call because – like you said, I mean, you could be looking at an offensive line that doesn't have Taylor Lewan next year. He, he said it on the Titans' website, I'm going to get cut. So mm-hmm. that probably means he's going to get cut and yeah. he won't take a pay cut. So, you know, Ben Jones, I wouldn't be surprised if he retired. I think, you know, a part of him would love to try to stick it out one more year. He's such a tough, you know, veteran leader. I'd love to see him back. But, you know, Nick Gates could be gone. So you're looking at a lot of, you know, change on that offensive line and – um you know, you got a new offensive coordinator coming in, even though he's been in the system. But how different is, is he going to make things? I would run it back with Tannehill. And that, like I said, that's a tough call. If you want to mm-hmm. stay competitive, I think he's your best bet. Because I'd rather have Tannehill over Derek Carr. I'd rather have uh, Tannehill over Jimmy G. Lamar is a different story. You know, I don't think there's ever there's going to be a way that the Ravens will ever let this guy go, you know, to an AFC uh, a competitor. That would be interesting. But I think, you know. I would just I would run it back with Tannehill. I know reviews are mixed about him, but he's won some games and he's the guy that can kind of steady the ship, you know, in the huddle and in the locker room until they really figure out what they want to do. Yeah, uh, I mean, listen, uh, I'm, what do you I, think, I, Sal? I, you know, it's just uh, I've been waiting so long, John. I just I want my guy, you know, I understand. I, I understand. I, and I, I'm not throwing in the towel on Malik Willis just yet. Uh, I, and I've said, this, I, by the way, yeah, Neither I said this, I said this on our last show when we had, uh, I don't, I don't know if it was the Jim White show. We had Corey Curtis on as well. Uh, it's virtually oh, just... Corey Curtis. Come on, man. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, Corey's it's, good dude, man. I like yeah, Corey. he is. Oh, he guy. is. He is. It's, it's, it's just that it's virtually impossible to, to, to make a, a real professional estimation of what Malik Wilkes, Malik Wilkes' ceiling is when yep. you take into the fact of who he had around him, when you take into the fact that they virtually treated the guy like he was a running back who could barely throw, um, and the fact that it's unfair to him that he's taken a dock now uh, because of success of Joshua Dobbs. Honestly, right. really. I mean, those two games he played, I think, really just put the gabosh on his whole career as a Titan. And mm-hmm. I think that's just really unfortunate because you're not setting somebody up with for success with Todd Downing and uh, you know Nick Westbrook Aquina. You're you're just not. Right. 
Right. Um, you know, d- does he look lost at times? Absolutely. But Josh Allen looked lost his first year. You know, you can argue his first two years. Justin Fields Jalen looked, Hurts lost. looked lost last year, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. What did he win? Six games? I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's it's a tough Well, thing he got to... into the playoffs, but I mean he did, you know, it was it was it was it was tough sledding there. Or oh, that's a couple right. years ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when they worked him in, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he's got all the intangibles. He's 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 built like a brick shit house. He's got yep. a cannon for an arm. He's yep. got wheels. I mean, that last game he played with Houston, very end of the game, it was garbage time. But he was throwing guys against the sideline, linebackers, just throwing them against to the sideline and breaking tackles. Um, you know, obviously you got the eleventh pick. It's all shiny. You know, you got the two big dogs up the top. That listen, if there's ever a time. Where you're at, a, you're at a spot where you could actually make it work. Just don't forget, they go back with Ryan Tannehill. They win ten games. They get knocked out in the first round. Where are you at, right? You're yeah. you're, you're picking yeah. 22, 23. Yep. Then you really got to absolutely throw the king's ransom at somebody if you want to mm-hmm. obtain that guy. Um, and uh, we had Teron Davenport on a couple of weeks ago, and he mentioned TD, that, my guy. Yes, love TD. Yeah, absolutely. And who did he mention, Jarrett, that we should go after next year? Uh, Caleb Williams. Okay, how you, you, ain't getting getting, him? you ain't getting him. How you get him if you're winning 10 games next year? You're going to give right. up your next five years first rounders to get him? <laughs> right. So, I mean, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things you got to think yeah, about. Yeah, put that but... on a new GM, right? A first-time yeah. GM. Put that Absolutely. on his plate. But you know, you know what? That. The more I hear Rand, uh, Rand Carthon speak, the more confidence I have in him. Uh, I, I love the fact that he, even though it's short-lived, mm-hmm. he's an NFL guy. He's been yep. in the locker rooms. Uh, he's well, you know, I loved his old man who played for the Giants, won two Super Bowls with, with the Giants. And uh, you're right, guys. He he won me over at the press conference. I'm a sucker oh, yeah. like anybody else. But, you know, he said all the right things. He presented himself extremely well. Yeah. The key is going to be, you know, how well he, him and Vrabel collaborate because that was the key word at the press conference, guys. I must have heard the word yeah. collaboration at least 50 times. You guys probably listened to the press conference as well. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, so my only thought is with that is let's say Rand Carthon has one idea about whatever it is, which player to draft or who to dress on game day, who to, who to, you know, deactivate or whatever. And Mike has another idea. Who's going to break the tie? Is it Amy? Mm. Mm. You know, we don't know. That's, that's the question we don't know. And it's going to come to that. They've talked about, oh yeah, we're going to work together. We're going to, I certainly hope they do. And, you know, I wish them all the luck in the world because, you know, on paper, it looks like a, a good situation and, and God willing, it will be. That's my only question. That's the only question I, that wasn't answered to me when Rand Carthon was introduced. Hopefully I'll get a chance to sit uh, uh, Rand down at some point and, and do an interview with him for, for, for my TV work. And I'm going to ask him like, who's, who breaks the tie, you know, mm-hmm. who, because I don't think Vrabel reports to Carthon and, you know, I think they both report to Amy. I would guess. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't really know what the what the what the hierarchy, the you know, the 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 flow chart is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll correct me. Of course. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I if I remember correctly, I saw at least some quotate quotes from Amy, basically saying like, "I'm gonna have a bigger hand in this from now on." You know, because uh, yeah. I think it's safe to say at this point that a lot of the big transactions this team's made, the epic failures this team's decided to, to make over the past two years, she had very little to do with. Right. Um, and, if, you know, from what I read, it, it appears that she's going to have uh, much more of a role in these final decisions than she might have had in previous years. And if that's the case, um, I do trust her. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. You but, know what that tells me by, by, by her saying that, guys? I should have AJ. put my foot down and said, we're not trading A.J. Brown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, and we've already, that, we've already yeah. found out that she gave him the okay pretty much yeah. to give yeah, a blank yeah. check. So Yeah, that, that again leads me to this next point with uh, with contract-wise. you got mm-hmm. two big contracts to talk about. You have Jeffrey Simmons, who you know obviously is not going to – he's going to get a blank check. But yeah. the, other, the other thing is now we have Derrick Henry involved with, with negotiations. His, his time's up next year. Do you extend him – you know, he's making $14 million, I think, right? Yeah, about like that. That, yeah. fourteen right. million dollars. Yeah. He was a second leading rusher against an absolute dog shit line last year, and, and he's proven year in year out that he is one of the best running backs in the league at twenty nine years old. You know, you see, you know, rumors circulating around Twitter that you know, oh, we should cut him, move, move ties with him. I don't want to. I don't want to have this team do exactly what they did to this guy and trade. Yeah. 
you know, Eddie George away, like they're yeah. like they're talking about doing with the Derrick Henry. You signed Derrick Henry to a team friendly deal. And I think he will do that and, and help build around this team, especially, you know, moving forward going into uh, 2023, 24 and 25 season now. So, I mean, you, you got you got to sign a guy like that moving forward. still. So. I'm OK with that. Um, but I want to bring in another running back and oh, absolutely like a Zeke Elliott, yeah. uh, Elliott Pollard type deal. Yeah. You know, I don't want him carrying the ball 330 times a year. Can he still be an effective running back? Yeah, he has, in my opinion, lost maybe a half step. But yeah, I'm certainly okay with that. A, if it's a cap friendly deal, and B, yeah. you know, you let him know, you know, you're not necessarily going to split carries with another running back, but we're bringing in another running back to get more carries and to take some of the load off of you. But he could still obviously help you in short yardage and goal line and, and you know, between the 20s as well. And, um, yeah, I'm okay with that. But th- it would be under those two parameters if it's me. As far as Jeffrey Simmons, just just pay the man. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. Don't wait. Don't, don't, don't mess around with that. You, yeah. know, you know, They made one mistake already with that. They can't let that go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And listen, th- th- another thing that I think is worth talking about, and I, I don't – it's, a, it's a, a topic that I think more fans and more people need to get on board with because, you know, you look at the, the realm of the AFC, not really the league in general, but yeah. specifically the AFC. Um and I've said this a million times from this team's inception and I'm talking Houston, right? Yeah. They've been just a much more predominant running football team. And that's why you can argue they've had the best pedigree of running backs in the mm-hmm. history of the NFL. I mean, top down, I mean, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the well, 21st Campbell, century, George, Derek, CJ, absolutely yeah. it goes down the list. Um, but in the 21st century, you know, you're winning Super Bowls with elite quarterback play. Yep. And if you got a great running back, that's all fine and good. But mm-hmm. running the ball 35 times a game, it ain't going to get you to the promised land. And I think the, the issue at hand right now is I think Mike Vrabel still believes in his heart of hearts that that formula can still get it done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we talked to Teron about it, you know, what to expect from a Tim Kelly offense. And he said, expect the passing game to improve. But mm-hmm. he didn't really he didn't really say, you know, to uh, – progress and to elevate meaning to throw the ball more so my question to you is um you agree with the with the statement that this team needs to be more or at least have more of an aerial attack in order to take the next step and compete with those guys like the ones in buffalo cincinnati kansas city and even baltimore absolutely 100 percent. you know it's you know i grew up old school right I, I watched 80s football you could run the ball and play defense and win a championship i saw the bears do it i saw the giants do it You know, I saw the Steelers almost do it in the 90s. But nowadays, you know, I always think back to what Ron Jaworski said when he was a broadcaster. Points come out of the passing game. And I'll take it a step further. Championships come out of the passing game. And we just saw that eight days ago at the Super Bowl. Two dynamic quarterbacks throwing the ball all over the place. At some point, you're going to have to be effective and dynamic and versatile in the passing game if you want to reach your ultimate goal, and that's winning a championship, just running the ball and playing good defense and being, you know, having a safe, you know, high percentage passing game, that'll get you far. It might win you your division, might win you a playoff game or two. But again, who's waiting in the wings? Mahomes is the oldest quarterback amongst that that group of you know young gun quarterbacks. He's not even twenty eight yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're gonna face one of those guys at yeah. some point. You know, in order to reach your ultimate goal, which is to get to a uh, chance to compete for a championship, you have to be able to keep yeah. up with those guys. It's just that simple, you know. And Trevor, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is taking giant leaps. I love running the football, man. Yeah. But you know, and you know, I grew up watching, you know, Walter Payton and and, all, and Joe Morris and all these great running backs. Like I said, points come out of the passing game, and championships come out of the passing game. Yeah, and I did look at look at uh, Lawrence. I mean, he's he's on a. His stock is going through the way, roof, guys. And, and he's, he's got uh, one of the best oh. receivers coming into the yeah. into the team next year too, yep. Calvin Ridley. Yeah. Yep. Well, listen, uh, John, I want to thank you again. Really, I can't thank you enough for for taking your time out of your night to to join us. Before you leave, I gotta mm-hmm. ask, as a yeah. native New Yorker, yeah, uh, what what's your outlook for the for the Bombers this year? <sighs> do, do you see not, us taking any step forward? Start- What's that? I'm not crazy about starting the season with Hicks in left field and, yeah. and Donaldson at third. Although he can pick it at third, you know, it just I'm glad they obviously I'm glad they re-signed Judge. I'm a big Judge guy. Yeah. I'm glad he's the captain. He's 
He's, Absolutely. he's Jeter now. He's your yes. forever Yankee and Absolutely. Monument Park and, you know, all that stuff. So I'm happy that they got it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. He's a Do Cardinal me. fan. So, yeah, we're, no, we're, fair yeah. enough. Do me <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I just feel like more of the same. I don't think Cashman's done enough to improve the team. And I'm probably thinking 95 wins and yeah. we'll probably lose to the Astros again. At some Absolutely. Point I mean, it's the same I old song and dance. But just, I don't, you know. I'd be much more confident if I were a Mets fan, you know, given oh, yeah. what they did in the off season. And, you know, I just, I just feel it's more of the same and I'm not an anti Cashman guy per se. Like I know a lot of Yankee fans are, mm. but I, other than re-signing judge and bringing, you know, bringing back Rizzo, which I thought was, was, was key. You know, it just seems like the same team from last year. They'll yeah. win a bunch of games. They'll make the playoffs and they'll probably lose. It absolutely is. I mean, you had Rodon. That's it. I mean, that's really yeah. it. And and how many times have we said over and over again, this team loses in the playoffs because they can't put the ball in play. Exactly. And what did you do? You let Ben and Tendi go, who arguably, arguably was going to be your best hitter as soon as he got back. Mm -hmm. uh, you let him go. You're bringing back IK IKF, who can't make a big hit to save his life. And, yeah. uh, you know, you could argue you got worse. You got worse with your contact hitters. And now you're depending on, uh, you know, LeMayhew to come back and, and be LeMayhew of three years ago. And that's right. really your best shot of taking another step. So uh, it's 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 going to be fun to get back to the Bronx and, and feel the warm weather and, and get back into baseball spirit. But I got no hope. I really I don't have any hope again this year. And ju <laughs> judge well, listen, doesn't Sal, I need guys like you and Keith McPherson over at WFAN to fight the good fight for us because I can't be yeah. there. I'll try to make a game this summer, but I need you know, I need you guys in the bleachers, you know, getting it done for us because yeah. I, I gotta live vicariously through you guys. Absolutely, and you'll you'll hear a lot of profanity out of the bleachers if I'm over there. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, first judge strikeout. I'm gonna be yelling and trade him over to Minnesota, and bring us Correa. So, um, no, that you know I'm you know how I am. It's, it's I know how you are, Sal. Too. You're emotional, and that's why. You know, that's, yeah. that's why we love you, man. That's why we love you. That's what the Yankees. sports fan is all about. If you're not passionate Yankees. about it, then you know what? Get out. If you're not a diehard fan, yeah. You no. know. Right? I, mean, I just Absolutely. won a championship. That's it. Oh, nine. That's the last time. I know. Any of my teams, cool. Titans, Devils, Net. I mean, Nets, get out. Nobody. Nobody, you know nobody. Funny? You know, it's funny. I was thinking about it the other day, and uh, I know we're up against it here, but I was thinking about it the other day, how spoiled I've been as a Yankee fan and a Giants fan. Oh, yeah. I've seen the Yankees win seven World Series. I've been alive for seven Yankees World Series titles. Mm. I've watched the Giants. Like I said, I'm an older guy. I've actually watched the Giants win Super Bowls in my teens, 20s, 30s, and 40s. Yeah, four, right? You've been alive for four? Yeah. Yeah. All four. Yeah. Well, we don't we don't talk about the Baltimore one. Uh, <laughs> that's been erased from my memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, that's why uh, everybody I'm, – I'm, I'm very envious of Giant fans because – they, they cry so much when things are bad. I'm like, dude, know, you won a Super Bowl five minutes ago. You won another one 20 minutes ago. Know, and, you know, I, 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 you know, I was, I was eating goldfish last time I saw the Titans <laughs> in a freaking Super Bowl. So uh, I still eat goldfish, but, you know, I was uh, eat, much more messy when I was eating them at six years old. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, John, I won't hold you up anymore. Thanks so, so much. Can't wait to get back with you on the radio with Greg. And, uh, Absolutely. Uh, we'll definitely have you back on some point down the road. So we can, anytime, uh, guys, love to come on and talk more. Titans football. Appreciate because, it. Yeah, I mean, even though I'm a Giants fan, I, I do have a. It's a different kind of passion, but I do have a passion for for Titans football because I want it for you guys. I want that championship for you guys. You guys deserve it because you guys, you know, you guys put it all on the line. So hopefully someday. Absolutely. We're John, praying. You have, <laughs> John, have a wonderful night, and we'll uh, catch up soon. See you guys. All the best. All Be right. well. Absolutely. John Burton from News Channel 5 and CBS Radio WNSR. You can catch him weekdays with Greg Pogue. Uh, you'll hear me too once the season starts, as always. That's my one of my fo one of my main vent, uh, or I should say, avenues to go down and vent. I scream at them and they love every minute of it. But excellent human being and uh, really thankful he took the time out. So, um, as always, it feels like a blur, and here we are, forty minutes 40 later. Minutes right? You think you're running out of things to talk about, and you just you never run out of tangents when it comes to the Titans, right? Absolutely. So, uh, Jared, you have anything else to, to add before we close out for tonight? Not the man. Hopefully, we get another great guest on next week. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tuck my way myself away into bed right now and watch some Full Swing. If you haven't watched that on Netflix, it is a oh. great golf documentary. 
Absolutely. I'm four in. I, I'm trying to pace myself because Dude. I'm going to be depressed when it's over. So I don't want to oh watch God. it. It is, it is a must watch if you're a golf Absolutely. fan or even a sports fan. But yeah, it's but when, if you're when you're a golf fan, it's it's a dream come true, you know. And yeah. it, it's crazy. I didn't even think I didn't even think like to ever want something like this, you know. And then once I heard it was out, I'm like, oh my God, this is the greatest fucking idea ever. Why, why, why hasn't this happened? And the ten first, years ago, the, the first episode was definitely the the catcher too with JT. And oh Spieth. yeah! But the one Absolutely. that got me in my all my feels was uh, the Tony Fina one so far. So I mean, I've not watched that one yet, but I'm excited. Yeah. Too. You're gonna be in your feels with that one. Absolutely, because he's he's Mariota clone pretty much. So yeah. I already have a lot of love for him anyway, just because of his heritage. But uh, we gotta we'll probably do it next week. But we, we didn't forget about our uh, quarterback list. There's got to be what? There's three people left, so we'll figure that out too. I'm sure that MF is still gonna be there. That I don't want to be there, but you know, we've got, we've got a lot of we have a lot of guests on, and they're all saying all signs lead to Ryan Tannehill. So we'll see how yeah. it all plays out. I know. Just be thankful. You know, we'll enjoy it. We'll enjoy we're, we're our ten. Tangent. If he's healthy, get the old line back, playing decent. We'll enjoy our ten wins, and then we're gonna get smoked by whoever the fuck we play. Could be Pittsburgh. Could be Baltimore. Could be Miami. Whoever it is, you know. Because if you don't have a guy who has it, you're not gonna make it to the promised land. But we'll see how things shape up. But uh, as always, thanks for joining us tonight. Make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, watch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you know, any of the platforms that we're on. We're slowly and slowly building. We're getting our our, uh, our guest list increasing. We hope to have bigger and better guests. John, obviously, excellent guest tonight. Uh, so make sure you help us out so we can continue to grow. And um, as always, tighten up. Sammy, send me out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast, Talking Titans, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.